Hello and welcome to Season 9 of Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. This episode is Lesson 26 of our look at the book of 1 Corinthians. We will be covering 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 14, and the episode will be titled, Liberties Paul Gave Up in Corinth. If you want to listen to previous episodes in this series, we invite you to go to our website at www.eastendchurch.org. These episodes are found in Season 8 of this podcast and can be accessed through the media and English podcast tab found on the main page. For now, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to start reading in verse 1. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are you in the Lord. My answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? Who goes a, who goes a warfare any time at his own charges? Who plants a vineyard and eats not of the fruit thereof? Or who feeds a flock and eats not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or says not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treads out the corn. Does God take care for oxen? Or says he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that plows should plow in hope, and that he that threshes in hope uh, should be partakers of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, it is, uh, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partaker of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so as the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. In these verses, Paul discusses the rights and privileges, or liberties, which he had as, a, as an apostle that he waived in the interest of others. In verses 1 and 2, some might think that this is a break in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 8, but it really is not. Paul had just finished saying in chapter 8 that although we have liberty, for the sake of others, we do not always need to exercise it. This is exactly what Paul did in Corinth. He refused pay of the church in Corinth. If you read Acts 18 verses 1 to 3, you will find that while he was preaching in Corinth, he worked as a tent maker with Aquila and Priscilla. Now this led some people to believe that he was an, ap an apostle. Paul was combating this notion right here in this chapter. He asked them four rhetorical questions to which yes is the answer. He begins by asking, am I not an apostle? Well, Galatians chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and even 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in the very first verse it states, Paul is an apostle of Jesus Christ. So the answer to that question is yes. He asks, am I not free? Well, if you read Acts 20 verses 33 and 34, you'll find that Paul was stating he was a free man. He didn't covet, covet any man's silver or gold, but he worked with his hands. He was free to do so. He wasn't a slave. The answer to that question was yes. He asked, have I not seen the Lord? Well, the answer to that question is yes. He saw the Lord on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, verses 3 to 6. And then he asked, are you not my work in the Lord? Again, going back to Acts 18, verse 1 and 11, we find that Paul was the person who began the church in Corinth. He was the first one to teach in Corinth. And so he is scolding them by saying, well, some people, they believe I'm not an apostle, but you don't have an excuse for believing that I'm not an apostle because you know I'm an apostle. So then he goes on, verses 3 to 14, answering the question about his apostleship. He again asks three more rhetorical questions to which the answer is obvious. He says, do we have the right to eat? Paul asserts the right of anyone to be paid by whom they labor among. 
That is what we expect today. If we work, we expect to be paid. Otherwise, we would be considered slaves. Paul was not a slave, and Paul expected employers to pay him. Well, he was preaching the gospel. In other words, but he was saying, I need to eat. And so, he, Paul is asserting the right of anyone to be paid by whom they labor. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, If a man will not work, neither let him eat. But he was saying you, to the Thessalonians, you need to work in order to have the necessities to be able to purchase food in order to eat. The second question to which the answer is obvious, he says, do we have the right to marry? There were evidently some who were questioning his apostleship because he wasn't married. Now this might lead to the conclusion that all the apostles were married, but this was not necessarily so. We do know that Peter was married because he had a mother-in-law. That tells us he had a wife. And so, just because he wasn't married didn't make him an apostle. In other words, being married wasn't one of the uh, qualifications, you might say, of an apostle. Matthew 19, verses 4 to 6, teaches us that it's good for a man not to be alone, but God never did command marriage. It always, he always left that choice up to men and women, even though it is better for us to marry. So he says, do I have the right to marry? Yes, I have the right to marry. Then he says, do we have the right to forbear working? Paul had the right not to labor with his hands, but be supported by the church. He is not coming along and saying, do I have the right not to work? No, Paul is saying preaching the gospel is work. And therefore, do I have the right not to work with my hands in order that I may devote my entire time to spreading the gospel? And the answer to that is yes. But Paul said all of these rights he had, but he did not exercise. To prove the point from verse 6, he adds a few more rhetorical questions. Does a soldier in war receive support from whom he serves? Yes. Does a farmer eat what he plants? Yes. Does a shepherd who cares for the flock eat of its milk? Yes. To cement his point, though, he actually turns to Scripture. And this is one of his most powerful points. We can reason with people all we want from this world, but going to Scripture to try to prove to religious people that it is right, uh, that something is right, is always our most powerful argument. He turns to the old law. Yes, we're not under it today, but it does give us examples. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4, he is quoting Moses when Moses said, You shall not muzzle the ox. He asked them if God's uh, law here was only concerning the ox. In other words, was God only concerned with the ox? Although God loved the ox, this lesson was taught for man to be kind and gracious to those that work for them. That's what the lesson was. The ox was working for the farmer and therefore had the right to eat because the ox was laboring. The whole point was those who work for you have the right uh, for us to be gracious to them and provide for them. In this case, he says, those who labored in the Lord were entitled to a living from those for whom, from whom they labored. That is a point. Verse 16, he says it again. Those who proclaim the gospel should live of the gospel. In other words, be supported by those of whom they preach. Here is the authority to pay preachers. There are some people who do not believe that we should pay preachers today. While it is not a necessity that a congregation have a paid preacher, it is authorized for them to have a paid preacher. But again, Paul says here, I did not avail myself of these rights, in other words, to be paid by the Corinthians, not because he wasn't worthy, not because he wasn't an apostle, but because he did not want to put a stumbling block in front of them uh, who were uh, learning the gospel for the first time in Corinth. He's, he is applying to himself exactly what he said at the end of chapter 8, 
where he says, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world stands, lest I make my brother to offend. Whatever liberty we have, if it's going to get in the way of someone obeying the gospel or continuing the go in the gospel, if it's truly a liberty and not a command, we need to not avail ourselves of that liberty. Paul didn't do it here in Corinth. He deserved to be paid, but he didn't do it. And you might ask, well, why would paying a preacher cause someone to stumble? You need to remember how corrupt the city of Corinth was. Paul didn't want the Corinthians to think that he preached the gospel only because he wanted their money. He wanted them to know that he preached the gospel because he loved the Lord and he wants uh, people to be saved by the gospel. And therefore, he took no pay of the Corinthians. Paul made a huge sacrifice. He gave up his liberty to be paid in order to save those in Corinth who might not understand this principle. But perhaps there are those who are listening who are not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll find links to more of our podcasts, as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.